undergoes another bumpy ride. It's the whistle of the past and the present. New York rail passengers make up roughly one quarter of the nation's train riders. A lot of communities, I think, have, have realized the value of train travel and are investing in it. Taxpayers put $8 million into Utica's Union Station. Revamping Rome's train station will cost more than $2.5 million. In Rensselaer, the largest new train station built in 30 years is almost complete. And then I can carry something on, too, right? You carry two on. Now, you get three pieces. New Yorkers have a lot riding on Amtrak. They don't have to give them $200 million, but they should give them at least over $100 million, I think, you know, to keep the service. Tom Landers is a fourth-generation railroad man who prefers the simplicity of the train and the beauty of a restored station. As you see this beautiful train station here, if, if they didn't still have train service out of Utica, they, were gonna, they wanted to tear this building down. Even drivers benefited from Utica's restoration. Oneida County moved a Department of Motor Vehicles office to Union Station. Now enthusiasts wonder if it will last. So much effort and, and money has been spent to create an environment that's conducive to train travel and to lose that now when we've worked so hard to come so far uh, for 30 years would really be uh, just a sin. Union Station ridership is up more than 51,000 people and that trend could keep Amtrak intact for the Northeast even if the National Rail Service gets shut down. Bill. Thank you, Jessica. Well, Amtrak isn't the only one having problems. Adelphia Communication was expected to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy today. Officials for the nation's sixth largest cable company say they've raised over a billion dollars so the company can continue operating. But a bankruptcy court judge will decide how the company's creditors are going to be paid. Adelphia's debt is estimated now at $19 billion. The cable company has about 5 million subscribers. Well, the answering machine at Utica Community Action calls the agency the Mohawk Valley's preeminent community development corporation. Well, that might have been true at one time, but today only a shadow of that agency remains. Their clients are left wondering where they will get the services they need, and more than 100 loyal, longtime workers were left first with bouncing paychecks and now without jobs. Jolene Ferris has their story tonight. Comes yeah. up and they run in. They're Geraldine not Caracas up. loved getting up in the morning and going to work every day at Utica Community Action for the past five and a half years. The first time the agency couldn't make payroll, she had an idea something was wrong. When the paycheck started bouncing, she and her co-workers were forced to face the reality of losing the jobs they loved and the paychecks their families needed. First, we were all in shock. So people really didn't know what to think. We were all in shock. We were all in denial that it had happened. And I think we were all praying and hoping that within a week or two, we'd all be back on board. Yet these workers seem more concerned that UCAI clients continue to get the help they need than they are about their own circumstances. A lot of my staff, even after they were laid off, went in and volunteered their time to make sure that the clients were taken care of. Candace Milson's first job at age 18 was at Utica Community Action. She enjoyed her work and probably would have stayed there indefinitely. But now she's looking for work. And like Geraldine, she thinks about the UCAI clients who will be left out in the cold. All the people who were in the weatherization program, we probably had 30 or 4 houses, 30 to 40 houses we probably started and never finished. And God knows how many more we had to do and never even really started at all. Both Candace and Geraldine just hope that another agency picks up the programs that Utica Community Action administered. They're not sure what's in store for them, but it's likely to include job hunting. Jolene Ferris, News Channel 2, Utica. Other news tonight. Budgets that were go before the voters again. Utica residents and West Winfield residents are going to vote on their school budget plans tomorrow. Utica's budget at just over $77 million uses an additional $520,000 in state aid to lower the tax hike from 6% to 3.5%. Meanwhile, in the Mount Markham School District in West Winfield, the proposed spending plan, $15.5 million, if it's adopted, it would hike taxes by 11.7%. Both votes are scheduled tomorrow from noon until 9 o'clock. Coming up later in News Talk, we're going to be joined by Superintendent uh, Dan Lowengard uh, from the Utica City Schools, and we'll talk about that. The state Supreme Court Justice has told the town of Paris that it abused its power on a local family. Judge Robert Julian ruled that the Spinella family was not breaking any zoning laws by using off-road vehicles on a track on their property. Last year, residents had complained that the machines were creating too much noise, too much dust, 
After a town hearing, the zoning board agreed with that. They made Spinellas stop using their track, but the Spinellas took the case to court and they won. Their attorney said the town should not have linked noise complaints to a zoning law. It's something different to get away. I mean, this is after church on Sunday. Take the family and go up there and have a nice brunch and come back. We, uh, that is not, of course, the tape we were talking about, but uh, the answer to that, of course, was to have courage. The, uh, uh, the attorneys involved in that case, he told them to have courage to go out there and go to the public and say, we want a law and let the public tell you what to do. Unfortunately, the case demonstrated how phony, he said, a public hearing is. Calls, by the way, to the attorney for the town of Paris were not returned. More than a dozen new doctors have arrived in the Mohawk Valley. They are doing their medical residency training at St. Elizabeth Medical Center. This latest residency class has students from India, Guatemala, Vietnam, and Russia. The students began their orientation this morning. All 13 residents will complete a three-year residency program at St. Elizabeth Medical Center. Well, the Boilermaker Committee has come up with a way to turn 24 years' worth of memories into something permanent that you can hang on your wall. The Boilermaker poster was unveiled this morning at the National Distance Running Hall of Fame. It was designed by a Connecticut artist who's also designed posters for other marathons. The publisher says he's captured the spirit of this event. You can pick up your copy of your own poster for just $10. They're on sale at the National Distance Running Hall of Fame and the Health and Fitness Expo the weekend of the Boilermaker. Utica Monday Night is in full swing. Tonight you can enjoy a bit of history, a bit of arts, and music in downtown Utica. Hollow and Oblique will perform at the State Office Building from, from 6.30 until 8.30 p.m. tonight. And the Proctor String Ensemble will play at Stuben Park from 7 to 8. For jazz fans, it's music by Jazz Garden from 8 to 9 at the State Office Building Plaza. And the Saranac Brewery Tour, which of course got underway at 6. And for the kids tonight, story time at the Utica Public Library at 7 o'clock. Everything, of course, is free and open to the public. Well, the hot, muggy weekend we had is history, but Monday dawned as a pleasant surprise, and it was much drier and much more comfortable. In fact, it was gorgeous, wasn't it, Amanda? It certainly was, Bill. It looks like that'll continue for the rest of this evening, and then we will see the humidity once again return for tomorrow afternoon, and definitely for Wednesday. It looks like Wednesday is going to be the hot one. As you can see outside right now, we're still at 79 degrees, and it feels nice and comfortable. Mid to upper 70s are pretty much across the state, about 82 in Albany and 85 in Poughkeepsie, but here we're looking very nice. You can see the clouds and the showers and thunderstorms that moved through late last night have pushed off to the mostly off to the south and off to the west. You can see we still have a few more clouds, so maybe a few hit and miss puffy cumulus clouds, but otherwise we should be dry for the rest of this evening and the next chance of rain will move in for tomorrow afternoon. But in the meantime, nice and very nice sleeping weather. Temperatures dropping back to around 57 under partly cloudy skies. If you're heading down to Utica Monday night, and you couldn't ask for a nicer evening, so go out and enjoy it. We'll have more on your week's forecast in a couple of minutes. Bill, back to you. We have a lot more to bring you tonight. A meeting of members of the House Science Committee today, not in Washington, but right here in Utica. We'll tell you why when we come back. If you thought Congress did most of its work in Washington, we've got a surprise for you tonight. Congressman Sherwood Bullard and his colleagues on the House Science Committee came to Utica today. A committee meeting on Homeland Security was held at Utica College. News Channel 2's Teresa Lee was there. He was a very angry person. By Congressman Sherwood Bullard brought his House Science Committee to Utica to discuss Homeland Security. Panel members talked about how to make New York and the country safer from terrorist attacks. The economy itself is under attack, our way of life is under attack. Osama bin Laden made it very clear. He called upon his supporters to use all means necessary to protect the pillars of the American economy. So this group is talking about protecting the American economy along with the Americans. They say more people need to be educated and trained in fields related to internet security. We have a number of aggressive uh, programs in way to recruit and to encourage our young people to seek uh, degrees in information assurance and information uh, activities. 
However, panel members said we don't just need people for a safer tomorrow, we need better technology with tighter security aspects. That's difficult, one panel member said, because technology is evolving so rapidly. As we know, the technology embedded throughout the U.S. economy is undergoing a continuous and profound transformation. Many panel members and science committee members were also concerned about how much security is too much. They talked about the precious balance of our civil rights and our need for security. How much of our, of our rights do we give up at a time when we're trying to uh, uh, protect ourselves? Congressman Bullard brought this panel to Utica, hoping it would spark state and local governments, along with private industries, to look at how they can help with Thank homeland security. Much, In Utica, Thank Teresa Lee, all. News Channel 2. More news tonight. The man who wanted to run against Congressman Sherwood Bullard has called it quits. Republican Roger Pataki announcing late today that he will not run for a seat in the 23rd Congressional District. Pataki says he decided to call it off because a recent redistricting plan for the 23rd District favored Congressman Bullard as an incumbent. Just ahead tonight, Jason Paulus sees standing by live at Utica Boilers as we get ready to go the distance. Hi, Jay. Thanks, Bill. We're going eight miles today from Utica Boilers to Utica Converters. We'll have that coming up later in sports. Amanda, how's the weather for tonight? Well, Jason, the weather is looking per picture perfect for running or if you're heading out for Utica Monday night or even staying home and having a barbecue. It's going to be very nice. As we take a look outside on Tower Cam, we're looking at a very clear evening. Just a couple of clouds out there. Temperatures have fallen into the mid-70s throughout the Mohawk Valley right now. We're looking at 77 degrees and it's very comfortable. That's the big thing because after the weekend when we saw all the heat and humidity is pushed out of the area, but the bad news is it will return for tomorrow. There's your current temperature. We'll have your forecast coming up right after the break. The weather is brought to you by your Jeep dealers. Now, Skywatch Weather with meteorologist Amanda Gaiman. Good evening, everyone. A beautiful evening out there. I definitely suggest you go out and enjoy it because we will return to the heat and humidity by tomorrow afternoon and especially by the middle of the week. So let's get to it and talk about what's going on right now. A beautiful evening out there. As I mentioned, temperatures right now are pretty much holding in the 70s throughout the area. And the big thing that you're noticing today is that the, you, we lost that humidity that we had. It just it was awful sticky yesterday. Our dew point was actually at about 77 yesterday. You can see now it's in the 50s. That makes it feel nice and comfortable. Our high this afternoon was only 79. And of course, we stayed pretty much in the 80s throughout most of the weekend. So that's why it was also so warm. But as we take a look at sky watchers, you can see the temperatures are very comfortable. About 78 down in Brookfield. All right, I should say in Maryland, 80 in Brookfield. 76 up in East Winfield. 80 for Steuben, 78 in Marcy. And you can see 77 stretching all the way back into West in for Lairdsville. We spread it out a little further and you can see 80s and 90s off to our south. So this warm, moist air will return to the area. This is all that was over us this weekend. It's moving back in. That cooler air that you see around the 60s and 70s around Toronto and North Bay will move back up to the north for a few days. It looks like it'll return probably maybe at the end of the week. You can see on this uh, local radar view that it's pretty much quiet, maybe a sprinkle down I-81, but otherwise it's very quiet and dry. The reason why is that front finally pushed through Still giving us a few extra clouds this evening, but overall, I don't think we're going to hear anyone complain about the weather this evening, that's for sure. On our skycast, we're going to map out the next couple of days for you, and you can see probably partly cloudy skies overnight tonight. We'll start to move in tomorrow afternoon. You'll see the heat and humidity return, and that'll, of course, spark just a couple of showers and thunderstorms throughout the evening. But by overnight tomorrow, it should push out. We'll see partly cloudy skies move in for the overnight. So another comfortable night probably for tomorrow. And then we'll start off Wednesday morning with more sunshine. Wednesday is going to be the hot day of the week. It's going to be hot and humid. Some areas could even come in probably in the upper 80s. So just keep that in mind if you are planning to mow the lawn or anything like that. Temperatures down the valley tonight, Dropping back into the mid-50s. Look for partly cloudy skies, about 57 in Utica. Further off to the east, about 55 in Herkimer and Mohawk under partly cloudy skies. Dowsville, you'll probably check in tonight around 56. Afternoon and evening, thunderstorms developing with temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s. We'll see the humidity return once again tomorrow afternoon, as I mentioned. Temperatures right around in the lower 80s for Rome and for 80 right around Sylvan Beach. On our five-day forecast, we're looking at scattered showers and thunderstorms for Wednesday evening, Thursday afternoon and evening, and then we finally cool off for Friday and for Saturday. So the weekend, a little bit better this coming up oh, weekend than what we a, had. What a sharp difference today. It was gorgeous out Yes, there. it was. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> You're welcome. It is time for another weekly edition of Jason Paulus and Go the Distance, and for some important running tips as well. Reed's running routine. Stay with us. You're watching News Channel 2 at 6. We're proud to serve Waterville in all of central New York. 
Sports is brought to you by Klein's All Sports, featuring champion. Now, News Channel 2 Sports with Jason Hollis. Good evening, everyone. Week 9 of our Go the Distance program is getting underway tonight. In just a couple of minutes, we're running right here from Utica Boilers over to Utica Converters right down the Boilermaker course. That's going to be 8 miles tonight. Now, this week's runner is a woman who not only wants to complete the Boilermaker for herself, but she has a family name to stand up for as well. Susan Matt. The name sounds familiar. It should. It's Susan Matt of the Matt family. FX Matt Brewery. Now I'm sure it rings a bell. And the Boilermaker is always on the minds of her family. Nick and I are replants uh, to the area. We've been back in town for 13 years, and I would say I was very impressed with it from the beginning. We hadn't come up probably prior to that. We lived in Connecticut, but um, it's just always been exciting. It's been a tre tremendous happening at the brewery and um, something that the Matt family's taken a lot of pride in being part of. Susan has always been a supporter of the Boilermaker, but this year is the year she decided to try it on the 25th anniversary but it hasn't been too easy for her to train. She does a lot of volunteer work in the community. And what I am doing currently is I'm president of the uh, board of directors for the Central New York Community Arts Council, which uh, is the owner and operator of the Stanley Theater. And we're really going to be embarking on a major project soon, so I spend a lot of time there. That's where our group comes in. By joining Go The Distance, Susan is making a date with destiny. That date is to get 25 mats to run the Boilermaker. Earl has, uh, he would really like to see 25 mats running the 25th Boilermaker this year, and we're getting there. Um, I'm the only one in the third generation, but uh, there are uh, 19 in the fourth generation, 12 of them are married, so there's uh, 25 in the fifth generation, and we're, we're up to three six-packs and working on a case. Whether or not they all run, Susan will be there, and she can't wait until it happens. I think it's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, and uh, I'm really, if I make it, which I hope I do, I'll be pretty darn happy. All right. Ready for a beer. Go the Distance, sponsored by St. Elizabeth Medical Center, Gilroy Kernan and Gilroy Insurance at News Channel 2. Yeah, Susan, won't we all? Hard to believe, but there's just a couple of weeks till the 25th Boilermaker. Your training is at its peak, and Earl Reed is at his peak with another edition of Reed's Running Routine. If you're not normally a morning runner, you should really think about running sometime at morning. You realize the race starts promptly at 8 a.m. I would suggest getting out there prior to the race to run early in the morning. Day one, easy pace on your hilly four-mile loop. Compare your times. Day two, longer run, but flat today. Team up with your partner and do a one-hour run. 30 minutes out, 30 minutes back. Day three, rest day. Day four, on the course today, start at Utica Boilers and follow the course, finish at Utica College across from St. Luke's for a total of seven miles. Day five, short and flat today, but again, concentrate on your pace. Day six, rest day, continue to take fluids. Day seven, on the course again, the toughest section of the course, start at the corner of Valley View and Steel Hill Road, go through the park, and then along the parkway to Burstone Road, turn right on Champlin and proceed until you reach the top corner of the cemetery. The purpose of this run is to get used to the hills of the Boilermaker. See you next week for the next edition of Reed's Running Routine. That's going to do it for us down here. Eight miles today, Bill. Want to come out and join us? All right, we'll do that. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> We'll be back with more of News Channel 2 at 6 after this. It's 526 on our Live at 5 News Hour. We showed you how the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired is holding a program called the Special Sampler, providing children from birth to 19 years of age with a chance to participate in a variety of recreational programs. It was, project it was, it was projected and undertaken in cooperation with the folks at Lowe's Building Supply. Other areas the children visited, including the Utica Zoo and the Kirkland Arts Center. At 6 tonight, we showed you how the trouble dam track uh, has been having, uh, troubles they've been having could prove to to be bad news for travelers. Officials are concerned with how these problems would affect our area. In the wake of major renovations at the station and train station, we sat down with officials today to see what plans may be on the drawing boards. Tonight at 10 on News Channel 2 on Fox. 
firefighters in Arizona say they are surprisingly optimistic about the fate of the city of Sholo. That's where a major wildfire is coming dangerously close. Tonight at 10, we'll let you know how much risk there is to thousands of homes. Plus, President Bush announces America's plan for solving the conflict in the Middle East. I'm Andy Jenks. Join us tonight for News Channel 2 on Fox on WFXV Fox 33. And tonight on News Channel 2 at 11, President Bush unveils his Mideast peace plan. We'll tell you what the report contains. Also tonight, a new report that shows how hormone replacement therapy can do more than just prevent bone loss in women. Join us tonight for News Channel 2 at 11. And we have time for a quick look at the weather. Oh, it's very nice this evening. Go Good out and enjoy gorgeous. it. If you're going to mow the lawn, do it tonight because I know that you don't like the heat and humidity because it will return for tomorrow and for Wednesday with some afternoon thunderstorms moving back in. If you like today, we'll have it probably back in here for Friday. Oh, that's perfect timing. Yes, Maybe for the, the weekend. weekend. Who yes. knows? Yeah, all right. <laughs> have a good evening, everybody. We will see you tonight at 11. Good night.